Secretary for Education, Youth and Sport in the Tobago House of Assembly. Other members of the House of Assembly with us today. We have apologies from Assistant Secretary Jomo Pitt, who could not be here today, and we have information that the Chief Secretary, Honorable Order London, may be joining us later if his uh, existing meeting concludes in time. I also want to acknowledge our uh, soon to be retired administrator in the Department of Sport, Mrs. Alison Lawrence, who has joined us today, Mr. Theo Trim, who is Director of Sport in the Department of Education, Youth and Sport, Mr. Raymond Alain, the President of the Tobago Football Association, other executive members of the Tobago Football Association, and all distinguished Ladies and gentlemen who are with us today, including members of the media, and especially our guest of honor this evening, Mr. Lincoln Tiger Phillips. My name is Tony Harford, and I have been accorded what I've always considered to be an absolute and considerable privilege to host any event that is in sport or sport related. I am I think those who know me know me well enough to know that I'm an explicit believer in sporting heroes. And the reason for that, of course, is that I do honestly feel that a country with no heroes, especially sporting heroes, is a place that is completely destabilized. I'm sure you'd agree with me on that. And that is why I've made a trip over to support one of my heroes in Lincoln Phillips, whose body of work is contained in the book we are launching this evening, Rising Above and Beyond the Crossbar. And it is, I think, more than coincidence that we've chosen today the opening of the ultimate football experience, the World Cup, to launch this book here in the sister island of Tobago. So welcome all, and we promise you that this formal segment will not be very long. This Lincoln has just showed me a list of, I think it is, is it 23 speakers? <laughs> so we'll try and get this over with as quickly as possible. Um, and then, of course, that will be followed by Lincoln's feature address. And I want to ask Ethne Yearwood, who's helped coordinate this event, please do not bring any water for Lincoln to drink when he's speaking, because that will just double the time of the podium. <laughs> we had that experience at the Oval. So no water, no hydration, no rehydration. I think before we start, it is right and appropriate, and I want to thank Pastor Cunningham for taking the time to be with us today, that we start in the right place, and that is with an invocation. Pastor Cunningham uh, is representing the Seventh-day Adventist Church this evening, uh, and he was um, invited to do so in the absence of Pastor Dottin, who could not be here, and who did a marvelous job at the similar launch in Trinidad. So please welcome uh, Pastor Cunningham with this evening's invocation. Other members of the House of Assembly, I wish to recognize the President of the Tobago Football Association, and Mr. Raymond Allen, and other executive members, members of the Tobago Referees Association, members of the media, members of the Department of Education, Youth and Sport, the Karen Administrator, Ms. Lawrence, football well wishers. I almost made the cardinal sin of saying greetings from Brazil, but uh, <laughs> I'm still in the mood, I'm still in the zone, please excuse me. But let me, on this occasion, on behalf of the Tobago Football Association, thank Mr. Lincoln Phillip, the, the author and, and the host of this evening's event, for choosing this day 
this historic day in football to do the launch of what I consider to be the most important thing in football, which is really recording our history. Because too often, as we have said here in Tobago, our history goes unwritten, unpublished, unknown. And therefore, it is with a sense of gratitude that the Tobago Football Association recognizes the tremendous effort it would have taken for any national to put to paper and to record the achievements of sport in, in Trinidad and Tobago, and more importantly, football, as you say, the people's sport. We at the Tobago Football Association want to encourage, applaud, and support all those who have a story to tell about sport in Trinidad and Tobago. We make the claim in Tobago that our association is older than the one in Trinidad and therefore we, we welcome the budding authors who would put pen to paper to record Tobago's Football Association history um, given that Tobago was associated with England long before Trinidad even thought of a country called England and therefore in encouraging Lincoln Phillips and in encouraging the other authors, we want to salute, and as Tony Halford said, without our heroes, without our archivists, without our, our griots, our poets, our Calypsonians, we would be nobody in this world. So congratulations, Lincoln, from the Tobago Football Fraternity, not just the fraternity. And as someone said uh, before you started, they have felt some plenty shots at you in your younger days <laughs> in the Trinidad and Tobago uh, competition and he looks forward to, to reading your exploits. We want to thank you and wish everyone here a warm welcome. Thank you again. Um, but the, that usually is reserved for the debate after the function. Um, I have to confess that I was a little bit baffled when our next speaker was placed in what I call a ministry or a division here in Tobago um, other than sport because in the years I've known him, he's a, a young man and of course I'm saying young relative to me. Um, he has always displayed a clear relish for youth and for sport. And to come back home to sport, I think, is where he rightfully belongs. Um, with his support, uh, his blessings, um, he, we are having this function today and we do thank him for it. I'd like you now to welcome the Honorable Huey Cadet, Secretary for Education, Youth and Sport, to bring greetings from his division at tonight's function. Please welcome Honorable Cadet. Representatives of the Tobago Football Association, the Refuse Association, Tobago Zone, uh, members of the media, uh, of course, members of my own Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Sports, and uh, the personnel, Mr. Trim, and Mr. Granger, uh, former administrator, Mr. Lawrence, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Um, as Mr. Harford indicated before, uh, the Chief did indicate that he would try to drop in if um, another activity that he has um, allows him to do so. But um, I'm, I'm really pleased to, to be part of this occasion this evening. Um, strangely enough, in, in, in reviewing the, the book, um, I recognize that um, Mr. Phillips and I share a number of things in common. Um, we both went to the, what is considered the best school in the, in the world, means Royal College. We both went to school at Hingson. Um, I had you had McGregor, I had Dwayne and Dexter, um, and there are the similarities that have change. Um, I played second 11 football, he played first 11. He went on to pro football, I went on to administration and sports administration. Um, strangely enough, but maybe my early years in KRC, I was also a member of the Lincoln Phillips House. Um, that was the name after you. But 
I, I think in, in, in reading the material, what, what, what struck out to me is that as there's a passage in the Bible, a passage of scripture, or there's a quote in the Bible where um, one of the kings, I think it was Herod or one of them, was referring to um, the birth of Jesus and, um, and saying what, um, you know, what good could come from Nazareth. You know, it was almost unbelievable that, um, that possibly the king of the Jews could be born in Nazareth. And very often, as a country, we you know, we underestimate you know, the ability and the potential we have as a people to ascend to great heights. And as we stand here in Kenan Monokol, the community where possibly the most successful Caribbean male footballer has come from, we now have possibly one of the most, if not the most successful uh, coaches, you know, from the Caribbean. We have a, a gentleman in the President Officer Phillips who would have been, if I remember correctly, um, one of the first minority coaches to win in the NCAA. And, and at the time that he did that, that was no easy feat because the NCAA at that point in time was still largely, you know, um, I don't want to say segregated, but still biased. And therefore, in reading the book, and I, and I would encourage you to, you know, to get a copy of the book, it, it and encourage young people, encourage yourself, encourage young Tobago, young Zamshun Nani, that don't let our size, don't let your size limit you. Because here was a young man from St. James, went to KRC, and then went on to become a top professional player, played with some of the best players in the world, went on to become a top coach, and not only in the NCAA, but then went on to be a, a goalkeeping coach in the United States system. And I'm saying, for us, that's a lesson in terms of understanding that no matter our size, that the potential is there for us to ascend to great heights. I think on, on, on behalf of the division and the assembly, what it has also said to us is that the opportunity for us to ensure that learning is continuous and learning is lifelong. And that just as Mr. Phillips did when his, 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 he made the transition from, from professional fully player, he became a player coach and he became a full-time coach in our hotel. I think it says that as an individual, we have to continue to ensure that we continue to learn and we continue to contribute in different ways and to ensure that in our own way, as the Division of Education, Interface and Sport and in partnership with, with you, the, the sporting fraternity, in particular football and referees and, and the football association, that we ensure that we create the opportunities that is necessary to ensure that our young men and women who play the game can continue to contribute to the game and continue to contribute to the society. And with those few words, I want to pledge the continued support of the division in our partnership with the sporting fraternities here in Tobago and of course at, at the national level to ensure that we continue to develop our people. I want to say, Mr. Phillips, just as we made the commitment to host this activity, we will be ensuring that copies of those books are available um, to the school library so that our young men and women can read them. And we will also be ensuring that we give, you know, on behalf of the division, we give copies to each club that is a member of the Tobago Football Association and, and let it become required reading and mentor. So I really want to congratulate you, Mr. Phillips, for your, your contribution to this country, the opportunity for recognition that you have given us. And I want you to continue, but God will bless you as you go forward. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Uh, before we introduce our next speaker, I'd like to invite Lincoln to please uh, come forward and Honorable Cadet, because Lincoln has made a commitment, and you alluded to it during your speech, that he would like the material contained in his book, which really chronicles his life and his unrelenting commitment to sport um, and the challenges he faced to mean something and to be used as research material. And so Lincoln is tonight presenting to the Tobago House of Assembly uh, 35 copies of the book Rising Above and Beyond the Crossbar to be placed in every secondary school in Tobago and the soon to be opened library.
in all seriousness, Lincoln Phillips I've always found to be a serious and impressive man. One who's risen way above the standard of just a player. A man who has committed his life to the upliftment of his fellow human beings through sport initially and then through life. And he has experienced life at every level. And when I heard him speak, the other Lincoln, I really shouldn't be saying this eh, because you know, boy. But anyway, um, when I heard him speak the other day, I was moved because he spoke of the culture of the environment in which he grew up. And we just always forget that. And I recorded this week, Lincoln Abbey recorded it, which I intend to have radio stations replay time and again because there's it was such a potent um, and uplifting message. And I think we would all be well advised to pay scrupulous attention to his remarks tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, the man who's chronicled his life via this book, Rising Above in the Crossbar, with an address, please welcome Lincoln Phillips. Good evening. Secretary of Education and Youth Affairs and Sport, Honorable Hugh Cadet, former administrator, administrator of the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Mrs. Allison Lawrence, Supervisor of Coaches, Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Mr. Peter Granville, President of the Tobago Football Association and Vice President Mrs. Raymond Allen and Anthony Moore, members of the Referees Association, members of the media, my dear wife Linda, I wanted to thank you very much for coming here this evening. I know it was a short notice. And really and truly, I am extremely impressed by the showing that I've seen yet tonight. We have launched this book in the United States at Howard University, my alma mater. I launched it at uh, the Oval, and we had two outstanding launches. And this is the third launch. We will launch in Jamaica and in Bermuda. And putting this thing together at very short notice, I, I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people cooperated. But Mr. Peter Granville, when I spoke to him about it, he says, no worries, that's his favorite word. No worries, then we'll put it together. And then he said, uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Lyons, you know, that's my partner. I'm going to Brazil, uh, Argentina, but she's going to keep things together. And it is obvious with so much, so many political, you know, goings on in the country, uh, to get everybody to say, well, okay, let's do it. Forget about it, let's do it. And I'm very, very honored and very um, thankful that you're here this evening. Now, this book that I have here is a chronicle of my history, my life story. And some of you would like, want to find out how did I decide to write a, a bio autobiography of myself. Well, I didn't think of it. My son, initially, he felt that, said, Dad, you should do this. And he went to law school, couldn't do it, and so on. So in, on 206, on a bus in uh, Germany, Valentino Singh, who had just written an autobiography of Jack Warner, signed it for me and asked me, Tiger, when are you going to do yours? I said, ah, you know, what are you going to write? He said, Tiger, be serious. You did this, you did that. Did the other, and I seriously, I mean, I downplayed it. And this is a, 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 a lesson that I, I would like to get through to our folks in, in Tobago and Trinidad. We seriously devalue ourselves. We are so great of people, believe me, wherever we go outside of Trinidad and Tobago, we have first, second, or third. 
But way back in Trinidad, we just don't think so well of ourselves. I want us to stop. And Valentino is saying, encourage me. And he came to my home and we started talking and then I started getting excited. And I want to, I, I, I want to really encourage the Bertil Sinclairs and all of our soccer heroes, our soccer people of yesteryear, the government in particular, to find writers so that they can tell the story. It's very important. We want to know, we want to be able to pass this information on to our youth. A friend of mine, he's a philosopher. Yeah, you know him as a soccer coach. And um, I don't remember his name, uh, Hannibal Nadja. He wrote a poem and he said, the, the, uh, from, from youth, uh, to, um, youth and wisdom. He said, the youth is wasted on the young and wisdom on the old. That, to me, was quite profound, profound statement. He said, the, how many of us have said, that, who have, you know, uh, passed on in age, have said, well, if I had the knowledge that I did now, that I am wise and older, I would have been great. You know, and the older people say, well, you know, them youngster, they listen to nobody and they criticize and so on. So we fail. All the wisdom stays with the, with the old and the youth and exuberance stays with the youth. If we could find a way of making a, a connection of trying to get to our young people, they will be much better than we were 10, 15 years ago. This book is, is all about that. When I was a youngster, people have said that I was a very good goalkeeper. I never ever thought of being, my, of being a great goalkeeper, the best goalkeeper. I never ever thought about that. Okay? I focused on stopping balls. That was my job. And sometimes it got so bad that goals were scored on me and some of the newspapers even made an excuse. Well, the defenders did not help Phillips and all of that stuff. I know. But I should have stopped those two goals. But I knew where to go also as a youngster. I headed straight to St. Mary's grounds where I met Joey Gonzalez. Joey Gonzalez, to me, is one of the best goalkeepers in Trinidad. Because Joey was, was not a flamboyant goalkeeper. He was not jumping all over the place. He never dived a lot. And he would speak to me. And, you know, the way he spoke to me, he told me to think on you the first, second, and third best goalkeeper in this country. I'm saying, okay, maybe you're right. Then he would say, he would give me a little advice, 10, 10, 15 minutes, and I would go away from there being a much improved goalkeeper. Okay? So I was, he was ready to give that information to me, and I was ready to go out and get it. So we have to find a connection. We have to find a way of getting this information to the youth. Our administration, sporting administration, we must find a way of getting information and uh, creating uh, 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 viable structures where we can uh, uh, get this information to our young people. Our, um, um, Valentino Singh, he was really instrumental in getting me to start my autobiography. And then I wanted to get I wanted to get a title for the book. And now the president of the Olympic Association, Brian Lewis, I sent out 200 circulars for folks who knew me, my younger days, older days, associates and so on. And he came up with the, with the, with the title, Rising Above and Beyond the Crossbar. And this is what he told me. He said, coach, as a goalkeeper, your level of performances were well above the bar. Excellence. That's what he said. 
And then he said, metaphorically, as a mentor, as a, as, as a parent, as, 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 as a husband, as a friend, you, your performances were also above the bar. And I was very pleased that he came up with that, with that, uh, that title. And I have to get a picture, of course, to go with the title. And the picture on the book is um, uh, myself going above the bar and uh, making a, a, a punch in a ball above the bar and Kayla right next to me. But Chino Valentino Singh is a journalist. And he told me that when, the, when everything was finished, he had to send it to England to get it, uh, somebody to look at it for style and, and, and all these types of things. But I had to leave Trinidad, my contract had ended, went to the United States, and uh, by one of my players introduced me to a young author by the name of Robert Clark. And Robert Clark said, Lincoln, forget about money, I will do this book, I like it. And Robert Clark really put some pros onto this book. And he, he did not write it chronologically. He wrote it, you know, he started from the, from the end and, and he, was, he jumped all over the place. And um, I have to thank Robert for doing an excellent job, okay, in bringing this book to life, okay. About my life, this book is my life, 73 years of age. And I say that I had a lot of injustices levied against me. I had difficult times. And when I look around, especially here in Tobago, you have difficult times because you've always been in the shadow of Trinidad. Always. You're always a second thought, an afterthought. But my friends, that is how it is. It does not have to stay there. It does not have to stay there. And when I decided to come down to Trinidad to launch my book, I made it a point that I must launch in Tobago. I wanted to do that. I have to do that. And it was at short notice. And, and it was suggested that maybe it was too short to bring everybody together. And maybe you should order the books and sell the books and so on. But it was not about the books. It was about doing it here in Tobago. That was important for me. In the United States, in the civil rights movement, in the early 60s and late 70s, we had a lot of inequities against black people. But fortunately for some of our black leaders, we, especially Martin Luther King, he said, everybody expected us to fight back. But he said, no, nonviolence. We will do it properly. And that went on and black folks, eventually got a lot of mileage. As far as Tobago is concerned, you know, we have got to step forward. Nobody is going to move you from the status that you, what life has given to you. Nobody's going to do that. You have to come forward. Okay? And when you get mad, don't get angry. When you get mad, get smart. I believe, I believe that the future of Trinidad and Tobago is Tobago. I honestly believe that. Okay? I honestly believe that. In sports, I think you do it right. I think your approach is good. And we have to continue that the one thing that's eluding us is that togetherness. We still, in bringing teams together, we still have have a situation where we are, we are not together as yet. But one accord is very, very important. And, I, and I'm hoping and wishing that in the next few years, I can see a whole lot of things coming out of, of Tobago. Life is a journey. An old cliche. But we have to use it 
again and again and again. Life shows a lot of curves at you, ins and outs and ups and downs. And in order for you to be successful, you have to, you have to know who is there to support you. And no one has, no one has to tell me that my life has been a successful one. I know I have been successful, but anyone who has been successful and believe he or she has done it or can do it by himself or herself, then that person is a fool. You can't do it by yourself. You have, first of all, your family. Your family is the bedrock, the foundation of your success. And I'm very fortunate to have had a great mom, great brothers and sisters, and then I married a very sweet young lady, a very, very beautiful young lady, and she has been behind me, the backbone of my success. But let me tell you, your marriage start off a little rocky, a little shaky. Because as a sportsman, and this is for, for some of you young ladies or young men, when you get married to a sportsman, be very careful. We have what we call in Trinidad Capriche, or whatever you call it. That means if you play in the lucky socks or lucky pants, you know, you don't want to change that. And before I was married, I, I you know, we won a lot of games and I would have socks. It has so much mud in it. I mean, it can lean up in the corner like that. <laughs> Seriously. My, 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 I wore a lucky shorts and I had jock straps that were brown. The only time my jock strap was white was when we bought it. So when we just got married, my wife, being a good wife, washed my lucky jock strap. Oh, Lord. When I came home, I'm looking for a brown jock strap. Can't find it. She says, look, it's there. Right. My eyes opened wide. I started screaming. She started crying. And we lost the game, of course. We lost the game. Yeah. But she came up and she said, in this house, a little piece of lady there, she was 99 pounds. She said, in this house, nothing will be dirty. I put my foot down on that. So I, you know, I changed, you know, and things went all right afterwards. So 49 years after that, you know, we're still hanging around, still doing good things. My four children, uh, young men, my eldest son is now the general secretary of um, Trinidad Tobago Football Association. So doing a good job over there. And um, my second son, he has his business, of course, played professional soccer. Uh, third son, doing well in California. And the last son, he has his own speed and agility, also played for Trinidad. They have given me some beautiful grandchildren. Six months, beautiful girl, five years, and uh, 18 years. When I go back, to home, go back home, I have to, I look forward to playing with them. So family is very important. I want to thank my family for helping me uh, uh, being successful. As I said before, life is a journey. Life is a journey. And along, along that journey, people will come into your life. Some for the long haul, some for the short haul. Sometimes the people who you meet just for a short time have a tremendous impact on your life. That has happened and you'll read all about that in the book. Let's fast forward a bit to the United States. Went to the United States to play professional soccer. In Trinidad, I was the first top goalkeeper, played all the time number one. Went to Jamaica to see this team, see the team train, to join the team. I reached there in the morning and most of the players were from Ireland, England, and they were in shorts, they were getting ready to go to practice and their legs were big, white legs. 
calves were huge, defined, and I was in a cold sweat. My legs were big too, but their legs looked bigger and better. Why is that so? Why is that so? Fortunately, I had a couple uh, Jamaicans and they told me, he said, Tiger, man, don't worry about them, you're better than them. And I went along and eventually I moved in and I played well. If I didn't have that assurance, I would have, you know, gone outside and not given my best. I don't care where you are. I don't care how white you are. I don't care how black you are. I don't care how professional you are. People from Trinidad and Tobago are just as talented as anybody. And we must, we must, we must send this message across to our young people and to our coaches. I went on and eventually I did not make the starting team. I sat down on the bench for the Maryland Bay's soccer team for 28 games. 28 games. I warmed up and I warmed down. Game after game. And we went to, I remember we went to a banquet and the coach, you know, apologized to the, the crowd that this is the only guy that has not played uh, a single minute. And when it was my time to speak, I said, you know, the coach is a fair coach, but I'm warning you, sir, the first day you make a mistake and put me in that goal, I'm not going to come. I'm telling you, it happened the first day I went in that goal and never came out. But here what happened in the first game. In Kansas City, in the second minute of the game, someone took a long shot at goal. I never punch a ball. I always tip it over. But I tried to punch it. And easy save. And I fell back. I heard the crowd go up in the air. When I looked at the back of the net, the ball is in the net. I want to die. I left home as a soldier and I'm expected to, 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 to be a major someday. And I see all this thing crashing down. And my teammates, because I pushed them on and I had a great attitude, my teammates, my captain in particular, talked me through the game, catch the ball, throw it to the right side, hit the ball. All the players wanted to do, wanted me to do well. And this is a message that we have in the book, okay? Attitude, okay? Not because you're not playing, that you're going to be on a drag and sit down with your mouth as long as, as, as you know, uh, as, as whatever. You be a part of the team because there comes a time when you're going to be called upon to do a good job. When I got my chance, they all played for me. Your attitude, your attitude will determine your access. Your attitude will determine your altitude. I went on and eventually... I became the, the head coach of Howard of um, the Washington Darts and the Washington Darts was the professional team. First, there was no big thing for me, but the first uh, black person to coach a professional team in the United States, that history. That went on there, we won championships. Guinness Book of Records for the longest winning streak. We had English players, we had African players, we had all sorts of Yugoslavians, all sorts of players. I moved from there and I went to coach at Howard University. We had Jamaicans, we had Africans, like we have Nigerians, we had Ghanaians, we have people from Bermuda, all sorts of people. And we went on to win a national championship, not only once, but twice. And the rest of it you will read in the book. But a friend of mine about two weeks ago read the book and he said, Lincoln, you were successful because of your IQ, EQ, and CQ. I'm saying, okay, I understand the IQ thing, right? EQ and CQ. He said, you were, and your players were successful and were champions because you were intelligent. Now, I left QRC with one GCE pass. <laughs> but I was always in pursuit of something. We were never poor. We were broke. There's a difference between being poor and broke. Poor, you will stay poor all the time. Broke, you will be in pursuit of something. 
always in pursuit of something. And I decided, well, I'm going to work hard. and become a champion. I'm going to be the best goalkeeper. I'm going to be the best goalkeeper coach. I'm going to be the best whatever. And when I started going to school, it was a difficult thing. Here I am, 28 years of age, working on my master, on my, bas on my bachelor's degree in the same class with my players. You know how humiliating that would be. You had to eat humble pie. They taught me, I taught them. I was a professional player, so I was better than all of them by far. Okay? They liked how I dealt with my wife. They liked how I dealt with my kids. So I was a mentor to them. I was their superior to them. But when it came to academics, they helped me. And what they told me later on in life, is coach, we all love you because you allowed us to help you. And it's a strong message because we in, in the Caribbean and Trinidad and Tobago in particular, we feel that because we are administrator, nobody can tell you anything. We feel because we are coach, the players can't tell you anything. Okay? Always learning. Open your mind. Open your mind. Okay? and you'll receive a lot. That message came out loud and clear. My players had an A, an A, an A plus. I was holding on to the desk with my fingernails with a C minus. I made it, have a bachelor's degree, master's degree, but as we went along, you know, anatomy and physiology, I started learning exercises, okay? Uh, sports psychology. I was able to deal with the players. So, in coaching, there are two parts of coaching. The art of coaching and the science of coaching. A lot of our folks in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the art of coaching. We can naturally coach. But you see the science of coaching? If you could combine the two, you become a championship coach. So the education for the players and the education for the coach must be an ongoing thing. So, okay, IQ part, I bought that. When he said e as, um, EQ, <coughs> emotional intelligence. So, okay, he said this is your ability to, to see a kid hurting or a person hurting and empathize with the person. Understand, as a coach, you have to understand your player. One set of rules it should not be for everybody. Sometimes you have to push a player. Sometimes you have to pull a player. Sometimes you have to coach a player. Sometimes you have to slap a player down and bring him back up. Sometimes you have to build a player and keep him there. Okay? That's emotional intelligence. Understanding why this kid is giving you so, such a hard time. The more you try to help him, the more he kick you or kick back at you. That guy is asking you for help. Explain that to me, I don't know. But when you get to understand and have that emotional intelligence, you understand players, you bring them aside and you start talking with them, you know. And that to me was a very important statement. But the last one threw me. The last one was cultural intelligence, seeking. He said, Coach, you went to Howard, to the United States. You took players. You took players from all different nationalities. On the professional level, you brought them together and you won. On the college level, you brought them together and you won. My ability, your ability to cross cultural lines and understand people was the root of your success. And I start thinking, well, did that come from? It didn't occur by happenstance. It came from my roots. It came, I cared for people, and it came from my roots. It came from St. James. St. James is one of the most diverse population in Trinidad and Tobago. 
We have Indians, we go to the Huse, we beat drums in my old days, and we just, you know, Trinidadians, when they go away, we, we, we mix with people easier. People are amazed that Trinidadians, we go, when we go abroad, we just accept people, people accept us. It is a gift that we have. And I want us to continue this. I remember when I was a young kid, we had five humble beginnings, five people sleeping on one bed. Five. And when rain fell, the roof will leak. My mother will be around there, you know, catching the water before it wet us while we slept. I always remember that. Sometimes I got up and she's there the whole night. My mom cared for us. The community, St. James, raised us. Raised me. So, all of that is in the book there. All of my trials, all of my tribulations, the ups and downs, the bouncing back from setbacks. And this is something that as coaches, we must understand. Last year, we had a situation in Trinidad where a coach got a goal scored against his team about five minutes from the end. And he thought that game was, it, it was over. And he lost his temper, around to the field, got put off, his assistants got put off. You know what? He got mad, but he didn't get smart. He could have stayed those three minutes and tell two players to go up, three players to go up, and he could have won the game. Later on, he, he came after the game, they had a chance to cool down, he came and attacked the referee again. And then in the, in the dressing room, he decided, you're not going to let his team come out because of injustice. What injustice are you talking about? When we played at Howard University, okay, the players came to me and they were mad because the referee is telling the all-white team, watch it, son, watch it, son, you're going offside. That is injustice. And they ganged up against us. They called us all kind of N-word this and N-word that and the players got upset and said, no. I said, when they call you that, I want you to get mad, but put the ball at the back of the net. Ha! Burst the net. And when you pass them, tell them, I speak languages, four, three languages, and I have an A, uh, and, my, and my major is uh, 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 mechanical engineering. What's yours, you dumb old job? And that's how we dealt with it. We didn't get mad when the, the N-word came out. We didn't get mad, we got smart. And we were able to deal, that, was, that, is, that, that is emotional intelligence, and it came from the top, all the way down. Okay? And this book is all there. And I would love very much for the, for, for the folks in Tobago, the harvest in schools, make it a special reading. Okay? Because it comes from my heart. Okay? In order to be successful, you have to have IQ, EQ, and CQ. And you've got to put it together. So I want to thank you very much for listening to me. I am very happy that I've gotten the opportunity to launch this book in Tobago the same way I did in Trinidad and the same way I did in the United States. At short notice, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate the evening. Thank you very much. Chief Secretary, Honorable Orville London, is here only for a few minutes. He's got to go on to some other event from here. So we'd like at this time to invite him to say a few words. Please welcome Honorable London. Uh, President, good evening. Let me recognize uh, the Secretary Cadet, of course, uh, a very good friend, Anthony Hartford, uh, Lincoln Phillips, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
there are a couple of reasons why I had to be here. I mean, all kinds of issues arose that almost made it impossible for me to make this. Uh, but I, I had to be here for a number of reasons. One, because maybe I'm biased, but I still think that Lincoln Phillips is the best ever goalkeeper that we've ever seen in the region. And uh, I, in my younger days, I would have uh, known and seen his exploits, and he would, of course, have inspired us. The second reason is not something I'm particularly proud of. I, I used to be a goalkeeper <laughs> at Bishop's High School. And while Lincoln Phillips might have been the best goalkeeper ever in the region, I might have been the worst goalkeeper ever at this of high school. So just being able to associate it with him, I think is something uh, that I really look forward to. But I think more importantly is that when somebody who has lived it, experienced it, and then an individual who has, as he himself indicated, has had the successes and the failures, has been able to triumph over adversity, has been able to come from relatively humble beginnings and, admit, and be able to make a success of his life. I think these are in fact the best teachers. And I thought that I'm happy that the Division of Education, Interfaith and Sport decided to associate with this because this is true education and this is a true educator. And, and, and I feel that people like Lincoln Phillips have a story to tell. They have lessons of their life that have to be learned. And they are the best people to express them. And I thought that uh, the Tobago House of Assembly wanted to associate with this particular venture and to associate with Lincoln Phillips. I am very, very proud of his achievements. And as I sat and I listened to what he would have done, especially in the field of academics, because as far as I'm concerned, I think what he did in academics might be more indicative of the character of the man than what he did as a goalkeeper. Because that goalkeeping was because he had a natural talent. But I think the commitment, dedication, those qualities that are really important for success, those qualities might have been exemplified in his academic pursuits. So I want to, on behalf of the, the people of my generation, to say thanks to Lincoln Phillips for providing us with all those moments. And uh, I also want, on behalf of all the people of Tobago, to thank you for your sensitivity in recognizing that Tobago is not an Ogosh island. You, you, you know the normal thing. Uh, they plan something and they say, what about Tobago? And say, oh gosh. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't check it like that. You, you, you made it very clear that you saw Tobago as an equal partner in the relationship between the two islands and of course in the unitary state or the sovereign democratic state of Trinidad and Tobago. And I really applaud you for your sensitivity. So congratulations to you. I hope that you, your book is very successful. I hope that you continue to make a lot of money. And uh, I, I really hope that more importantly, that you continue to inspire the island and the country's young men and women. Congratulations. Best of luck. I want to I want to make a presentation. Mr. Salaman, please. I said to Mr. Over London, my favorite person, thank you for your support. You can finish. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thanks again. And thank you very much, Honorable Chief Secretary. I guess life is always great when the best and the worst get together. <laughs> um, all that's left now is for the issue of the vote of thanks, but before that, you know, 
Lincoln continually speaks of this 49-year-old relationship with Linda, his beautiful wife. And of course, we always tell Linda, Gil, how could you endure this man for 49 years? And of course, as we've gone along with this book launch and, you know, spent many more hours together, I realized that Linda really had a lot to put up with. Because speaking of those football socks and jock straps, that's a lot of stench and effluence you had to deal with there. So I too salute you on 49 years. I was secretary of the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Honorable Hugh Cadet, the former administrator, Mrs. Alison Lawrence. A number of things that I learned about Brother Lincoln Phillips. And I want to make mention of a particular feat that was not mentioned here tonight because a number of those persons who were present aren't here tonight, people like former national captain Sedley Joseph, the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, Raymond Tinky, and a number of others, to include um, the writer who is the chief editor of The Guardian. Brother Ling, brother was also a very good sportsman. Cricket, of which at some times in the net, and today we were coming up in the flight and he mentioned our brother who's now deceased, Rodel Clark, when they came to Trinidad, I think, and Greville Nicholson, when they were at the nets. And he spoke to Tobagonians having the belief that we are just not as worthy as Trinidadians, and he went across and spoke to them, and they developed a relationship. But beyond that, I want to speak to the fact that he also was so such an athlete that there was a boxer in St. James many years ago. Um, what was his name, sir? Fearless, Fearless Freddy. Fearless Freddy. I mean, I have never heard of Fearless Freddy until that time. And the Fearless Freddy, nobody even wanted to spar with him. He was that deadly. He will knock you off even though you had your headgear on. And because Brother Lincoln Phillips was such an athlete, they decided, well, you know, Lincoln, give him a go. You know, you could skip away from him. You are the tiger. You are the, you are the ultimate mamu. And Lincoln decided, I'm going to have a go. And I think that that sparring session should have been at 7 o'clock. But because there were other sparring partners and they obviously went out the door early, the sparring session with Lincoln Phillips took place a bit earlier. So his partners were still up the road by the police barracks. And they were down the road by the, um, where you play football there? By the, the hospital. The poor house. Oh, sorry. And as they came out, coming down with their boots attached to the laces, you know, we used to wear the boots long ago. As you finish, you tie them and you put it over your shoulder, hanging there. They saw an ambulance coming up by where court is at the bottom of Long Circular Road. So they're holding their heads and they started running down to the poor house. And then they saw Lincoln sitting with his hand by his head. It was the ultimate boxer that Lincoln had put in the hospital. There to tell you what the kind of tiger he was and still is. I just thought like, that was that blew my mind. I um, just thought I needed to share that with you. But you know, Miss Linda. I really want to commend you, and I don't know, for 49 years, so the Honorable Lord of London said you put up with him. I'm sorry, um, Tony Arthur. Um, and I have a clear idea because, trust me, my wife puts up with me, and I, I really don't know why. Maybe it's a coaching thing, and it really takes a lot to put up with me. But behind every successful man, it is alleged that there is a, a good woman. And I only had the opportunity to meet both of you when I came back to this country and became a national coach. And both of you helped mold my life in whatever little way you helped. You know, you helped in that process. And I want to thank you. But I also know that he rocked the cradle. He was secretly dating you at 16. It is important for me to um, understand those things. When I sit here, one of the worst things to do is to give a black man a mic in. 
and 16. But also, he was paying some of his players on the professional team with your mortgage money. No. He said in the Oval two Thursdays ago, two Wednesdays ago, to call him Mr. is an insult. You call him a coach and he's happy. And there's a life lesson to be learned there by all of us CS coaches that we do the best we can. We fight the good fight, even though we may be losing the fight. But we don't become angry. We become, what they have? Smart. Don't get angry, get smart. So I want to take the opportunity to thank Mrs. Yewon, Ethne Cook, you know, um, in the trench, uh, TAG. I also want to take the opportunity, Sheridan Cook, Marcus Daniel. Um, so at another place, Ms. Coralie Lyons, a Tobagonian who would have left our shores, went to bishops as well, but worked assiduously behind the scenes to ensure that this event took place, while most of us would have been out of the country for the last week, together with Ethne Yearwood and the team, ready to say thank you so much. To the Referees Association, thank you for your efforts and your input here tonight by way of showing up. Um, Sparrow being its eldest uh, member, uh, we call him the Mighty Sparrow, but we call him the Spity Marrow. Um, to the pastor who would have blessed us here this evening, we thank you um, for being here, Mr. Anthony Moore, uh, the Honorable Huey Cadet, we thank you for your words. And um, a gentleman who needs, you know, no introduction to Tobago, Mr. Anthony Harford, we really thank you for all your words. And the fact that you hosted this event this evening, I thank you, sir, you did this with great skill. At the end of the day, just want to end by saying, Lincoln, that your book, and I, in reading your book and listening to the discourse two weeks ago, speaks to my life story, leaving school, not with the subjects that you expect. And um, you were left with one subject more than I did. But it is not about what you do and when you do what you do, but it is when you believe you fall, it is what you do after you think you fall. You get up, you dust yourself off, and you start over. It's, to me, I live a very good life now, I'm very comfortable with what I do. I push on youngsters, I want to just indicate that in our audience is Jonan Roberts, Naira Noor, People who would have been under my child that I would have pushed to become scholarship athletes and now return with scholarships for the employment to be those of assembly. Lincoln, I want to take the opportunity on all of Tobago to thank you for what you have done for Trinidad and Tobago and to thank your wonderful wife for being here with you. You've done a human service. We thank you. Gentlemen, Ladies, I want to thank you for being a wonderful listening audience. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>